In many ways, the whirlwind was in front of its time in both its design and the manufacturing technology of the day. The design was of a monocoque construction where the skin of the airframe provided not only the aerodynamic surfaces, but was also the main structural member for the strength and rigidity of the airframe. Unlike the more conventional aircraft of the day, the semi-stressed skin Spitfire or the tubular girder Hurricane, in which both the fuselage was the main structural component to which all other structures were attached, the whirlwind fuselage was secondary to the centre wing section to which it was bolted. The construction methods <coughs> employed in the cockpit section present many complexities for the manufacture of a single example of a recreation of a whirlwind fighter. As can be seen in the two images, there are no continuous frames in the cockpit section. The frames only provide for the contour of the skin. Even the lower and upper longer arms and the bulkheads are provided with location fixings. These do not provide any stress continuity across the airframe. Only when the skin is riveted in place do we have a complete structural membrane. The forward bulkhead, known as the bulletproof bulkhead, was of a composite construction. It was manufactured from 9mm thick armour plate, to which an aluminium flange and the nose cowling seating rib were riveted. Two heavy angle brackets were riveted to the lower edge. These brackets are bolted to two similar brackets attached to the main spar shear web providing the main connection between the bulkhead and the wing centre section. The bulkhead has no direct connection to the lower longer arms on which it sits, the attachment again provided by the flange riveted to the skin. The bulkhead also provided the foundation for the forward cannon base plate via a large diameter strut extending from the cannon mounting casting to an eye bolt at the top centre of the bulkhead. Just below the eye bolt, a horizontal line of bolts provided for the connection of the top edge of the heavy diaphragm bulkhead. Image 1 shows the bulkhead outer profile being machined. Image 2 shows the internal layout for the lightning holes and the position of the cannon breech recess ready for machining. Image 3 shows the bulkhead to spar connecting angles after match drilling to maintain their correct alignment. Image 4 shows the main bulkhead to spar connecting angles after being riveted into position on the bulkhead. Image 5 shows the skin attachment angle and the nose cowling support rib riveted in place, the horizontal holes for the diaphragm bulkhead and the eye bolt location hole are at the top of the image. The holes around the cannon breech recess are for bolting the cartridge and fume extraction chutes in place. The diaphragm bulkhead was the main structural bulkhead the bulkhead was of a heavy gauge construction reinforced with riveted T-section stiffeners and doubler plates. An extruded 90 degree flange was riveted to the outer edge and that provided for the riveted connection to the skin. The bulkhead sloped down from the top of the armoured bulkhead and provided for the main bolted connection to the rear spar and the lower longer arm. The bulkhead was also the foundation for the instrument panel and the containment box for the electrical fuse and distribution systems. Image 6 shows the profile of the diaphragm bulkhead after machining on the workshop's large open gantry CNC machine. 
Image 7 shows the CNC profiled former and bolster blocks clamped in place on the bulkhead for the forming of the internal stiffening flange on the bulkhead. Image 8 shows the positioning underneath the bulkhead of the machined and formed heavy section T-stiffener now riveted in place to the bulkhead. Image 9 shows the jig drilling of the periphery of the bulkhead ready to match drill to the angle flange required for the skin attachment. The pilot bulkhead was of a much lighter construction than the two forward bulkheads. It was however reinforced with a heavy box section chassis. This chassis served two functions. It is the rigid strength member to which the pilot seat and associated mechanisms are attached. It is also the foundation for the rollover crash pylon. A large opening in the bulkhead allowed for ground crew access under the accumulators into the rear fuselage for maintenance and service operations. Various equipment was also attached to the front and rear faces of the bulkhead. Fair leads for the flight control cables, the seating for the emergency hydraulic hand pump and the pilot's oxygen supply connections. The bulkhead provides for the forward connection of the accumulator tray. The lower edge of the bulkhead forms part of a complex connection between the fixed lower fuselage skin and the detachable forward facing alcove panel over the fowler flap in the centre wing section. Image 10 shows the bulkhead located between the CNC profiled former and bolster blocks ready to form the internal and external flanges. Image 11 shows the formed flanges and the layout of the box section support chassis required as the main foundation for the pilot's seat. Image 12 illustrates one of the many unseen components in the construction of an aircraft. The box chassis is reinforced with a large number of distance pieces required so that the riveting does not crush the chassis. As both the distance tubes and rivets are no longer available, these parts have all had to be made in-house. Image 13 shows a cross-section of the chassis member with the distance pieces fitted. Image 14 shows a completed bulkhead and box chassis riveted together. Also seen the base rail and fish plates for the rollover crash pylon support. The pilot seat torture brackets fixed through the chassis are also visible. The last bulkhead, frame 10, is the main connection between the cockpit and rear fuselage. The connection is in reality a slip joint. The outer rim of the bulkhead is formed from an extruded T section. The rear facing leg of the T is tapered inwards to allow for the rear fuselage to slide over it. The forward leg provides the flange to which the cockpit skin is riveted. The bulkhead is a very complex component made up of extrusions, formed angles and pressed bead forms, all with riveted connections. The connection to the rear fuselage is by way of some 60 bolts around the circumference of the rear flange. The arrangement of the bulkhead is further complicated by virtue of its inclination from the vertical axis. Without going into detailed mathematics, the inclination was designed to best resist the very complex mechanics of combined torsion and bending moments to which the airframe will be subjected. Image 15 shows frame 10 located in the assembly jig. Note how it also provides the foundation for the rear of the sloping accumulator tray. However, 
more on frame 10 in part 4 of the whirlwind engineering update. The Whirlwind Fighter Project is a not-for-profit charity run by a group of dedicated volunteers. If you feel you could assist in recreating this iconic World War II fighter, please visit our Facebook and web pages. Any donations can be made through our GoFundMe page. Also, please visit our active partner in the Whirlwind Fighter Project and future home of the whirlwind, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum. Many thanks.